Hey guys, well today's project, we're going to be changing out the heater core in this 2001 Ford F-250 Super Duty. Now I believe that this should be pretty much the same for all Super Duties in the range of uh, 99 to 07. And uh, you know, do your own research and obviously there may be some differences, but uh, my research, that's what it has shown. So the first thing you got to do when you're changing out a heater core is you got to get the hoses off. On the in, in the engine bay here so I've already taken the liberty to do that just because it is a little bit time-consuming at times and um, you can see the fittings are right there and uh, unfortunately I can't really show that because it's a lot of hand waving and uh, if you're really concerned about how to do that you will uh, can do what I've had to do for this these particular fittings which is do your own research online there's a lot of great videos and photos online on how to do that but these things have a what's called a quick disconnect. It's neither quick or easy, but if you get the uh, the actual kit tool kit to do it, it simplifies things. Um, but basically, uh, there's this uh, these Teflon hooks and a spacer here with a couple O-rings on there, and you gotta kind of push the you gotta push the tabs. Here, here's a fitting right here. Um, so you can see the spaces right here. You got to be able to push the tabs loose and then it allows this fitting to just slide off. As soon as I get the heater core out, hopefully I'll be able to get that fitting off and then I can show you a little bit closer. But as I said, there's a lot of great videos on how to do this already on YouTube and on the internet. So be sure to check that out. So I've already taken the liberty to disconnect those hoses. And before you even do that, you definitely want to also drain your uh, coolant system. And um, it's which is recommended to do anyway for vehicle maintenance, so you definitely want to do that. So first drain your fluids, then disconnect these hoses, and then now that this is all disconnected in the engine bay, we're going to go to the inside of the truck and get to work. Alright, so I want to just get a quick video on these connectors for you guys. Now this is actually an aftermarket one. This particular one has uh, the extra flange, so that way you can... Uh, just put on a regular rubber hose, tightening down with a hose clamp, but it still has the quick disconnect on it. But the principle is still the same. So it's got this uh, plastic spacer which actually slides on and then over these little tabs. Hopefully the mic, my camera will actually focus. There we go. So now, what there also is, now it remained in here, but there's two O-rings. There's actually two O-rings into this fitting um, that would kind of go right around this pipe. And um, what you'll do is you would push this in you can see the little tabs that would catch and then these are the this is the face where it would catch so you'd actually push this on and then the tabs would kind of pop in there and snap and then you'd be good to go so that's how these quick connects work but the problem is it's hard to push these tabs when you're underneath that firewall just because everything is so tight but now that I've got it all apart I wanted to show you guys um, what that looks like you know you can get a kit for new replacement uh, plastic pieces and overings and I'd suggest you pick that up um, but if everything came together well, I suppose you probably could just use the same parts if you were in a pinch. But as always, we recommend new replacement parts when you're taking the time to do all this. And um, we did lose a little bit of antifreeze and whatnot when I pulled this thing out of the truck, which is um, to be expected. Obviously, if I'm having a leak in the first place, that would explain why I have to tear this all apart and change it out anyway. So, there you go. Just wanted to show you uh, real quick how the connect is. So now let's get back to work at getting the new heater core in place. All right, so now that we're into the truck here, first thing we need to remove is the glove box. The nice thing about these particular heater cores is we're not gonna have to tear the entire dash apart. Uh, it's always been kind of the nightmare of a lot of trucks and in general, or even cars, you know, anything. Um, you gotta tear the dash apart and it's an absolute mess. These are actually, fairly simple and straightforward and to you this is really lucky for you um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the glove box now <clears throat> there's little tabs on the inside that keep this from falling out so that's an easy removal uh, but to get the glove box off you're gonna have a couple uh, nuts down here and um, we're just gonna take these out here these little screws and um, then the glove box will come out and we're gonna start there. So I'm gonna sit the camera down and um, try to kind of walk you through this a little bit more from a uh, in front of the camera. So I've already got my driver here. Um, for these this glove box it is a 9 seconds 
it appears to be the right size so there's just three bolts we're going to take these out real quick and then hopefully the glove box will just come right on out Alright, so I've taken these little screws off, and we're just going to pull this loose, open this, and then there's going to be little tabs that are going to catch right here. You're just going to push on each side, then the little tabs will flex in, and then out comes your glove box. Now you just want to set this aside, and then we'll move on to the next item. So now, the first thing you want to do after you've removed your glove box is you want to disconnect your vacuum lines. You should have a little connector hanging down here. And there's going to be a little tab. You're going to want to pull that back with your finger. You're going to pull the tab, and then your line will disconnect. Now you're going to have a couple quick pops here for mounting purposes. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's got a little, a bunch of little ridges on it, and it pops into the plastic. So you're going to pop those out. And then there's going to be just a little spring feature here that you're going to want to just pop these lines out of. Uh, tuck them up and then just off to the side and out of your way all right so now from here what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove this actuator motor that actually actuates that dampening flap in here so we're going to take this out next all right so there's the actuator motor up in here so we're going to start off by taking off this screw we're gonna kind of I'm not really I cannot remember what this screw there's another screw in behind if you reach your hands up on top you'll be able to feel it back in there I believe it is a eight millimeter as well as this one however we're gonna find out a little bit of trial and error so we're gonna take this screw out and then the one up the top and then hopefully this thing will just come right on out Number one. Now the hard one will be actually reaching up on top of here. Actually, should unplug it. Get that wiring out of the way, just so that we have a, just a little bit more room to work. Get your hand up there. Now this one, I'm this case, I'm using a just a mini socket wrench. You can use whatever tool you have, works well. Again, I've, it's been a long time since I've had to do anything like this, so we're kind of remembering how to do it as we go here, guys. This is the part of the process, which is just a lot of magic hand waving, because unfortunately, it is so tight, I can't get the video camera up in there for you guys to see any better. And um, kind of just doing it all by feel at the moment. Now, that just lifts out. So there you go. You can see where the screw was. It was right here. So it was kind of tricky to get in there. We just had that screw holding it, as well as in this one, and then we just had a couple other ones that slid into place. So you kind of got to give it a little bit of a twist and finesse and then lift up and it comes right on out. All right, so the next step is we're gonna get this vacuum actuator out here. It's gonna be two screws and it's an eight millimeter screw so once again we're going to choose our small mini 
socket wrench and we're gonna just take those two screws out and then there'll be a little hook down here we're just gonna kind of bend it out and then that little hook is gonna release itself so hopefully you'll be able to see that on the video Alright, sorry if I'm blocking them there. There's one screw out. Kind of hard to get at, so I apologize if I'm having to cover the screw here again. Just because I kind of got to hold things in place while I take out the screw. hand the rest of the way. Nope. Can't do it by hand, you gotta use the tools. Just keep on getting through. Looks like it's loose. Alright. The second screw. Now this should just lift up and kind of lean it back and then you're gonna see a little hook down here at the corner. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of work this down and get that hook to release. And there's also, as you'll see, there's uh, some more vacuum tubes. You gotta make sure to unplug those. And there we go. Now we can lean it out and you can see that hook. So all we did was it was in here in the little hole. We just rocked it back and worked its way out. And now this mechanism is out. So put that with your stash of parts and then we'll go on to this cover. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this cover. And behind the cover is actually the heater core itself. You can see the tubes going up and then into the firewall. So we're going to get our electrical connection out of the way just for to keep things easier. At least a little bit. Now there should be, uh, I believe, seven screws on this. And they all appear to be the same 8 millimeter. So we're going to go ahead and sit the camera down and get these screws out. Now you can use an electric screwdriver if you want, but you got to be really careful with your torque. So typically with a lot of this kind of stuff, I just like to use my hands. Let's see if we can adjust the camera a little bit better there for you guys. All right. second one. And then the last one is kind of hidden by this piece of trim, so I apologize, you won't be able to see that one. Alright, sit your tools down. And now this cover, all you gotta do is pull the bottom out towards you. It might be a little sealed. Alright, got it. And I got moisture up in there, which is definitely the reason why we're changing out this heater core, because it's got a leak. You're going to pull it out, and then you're going to lift up and kind of wiggle it back and forth if you need to. And then this cover comes right on out. You see the little tabs that were kind of just sitting over the top. So then you just add this to your pile of parts as well. So then, what you're left with is there's the heater core. So now, obviously there's a reason you're replacing the heater core. Typically what you're going to have is you'll be driving down the road when you got the heat going, then all of a sudden your windshield starts to frost up. Unfortunately I didn't have a chance to get the video because I was too busy driving. Um, 
But definitely as we pulled this cover off, we got all kinds of extra moisture of where the antifreeze has been leaking in. And so um, you definitely want to be aware of that when you're pulling your cover off. I've got nice heavy rubber mats underneath, so it's not a big deal. Um, but sometimes you may have a lot of water, sometimes you might not. So I've got a little bit of damage up here, and I got rust, and we'll see maybe that more of the damage is on the back side, but it looks like it was getting a little damage here and a little damage here. I'm not really sure where the leak is, but this is a little rusty, so I'm assuming it's kind of up in here. So now you're just going to have your foam kind of tucked up in here, your ceiling foam. You're just going to want to wiggle it. Hopefully this shows up on the video okay. Actually, I think I'm just going to go ahead and sit this down. But the one thing you really want to watch is these tubes up here through the firewall. As you remember, you're going to have your quick connects that are going to be coming through the firewall. And so you got to account for that and make sure that you're making sure that everything gets out um, as it should. So don't just pry on it because it's not coming out. But it should be relatively um, easy to get out. All right, so we're just going to grab this. I'm going to pull it out. Hopefully this is showing up okay on the video. And the trick is, as I said, get these tubes out. Because you don't have much room to work with, as they're pretty tight. And you um, might need a little bit of finesse, but take your time with it. And it'll all just pull right on out. Alright, I appear to have gotten it loose now. The tubes are through the firewall. So you kind of want to pull it forward and lean it back. And I'm losing some fluid, but that is no surprise. You gotta watch your electrical connectors. Ooh, I'm losing a fair bit of fluid here. So I'm gonna get this thing out of the truck as soon as I can. It just pulls on out. I'm gonna sit it off to the side. All right, so what you wanted to make sure to do then is to take a rag and then just clean out this orifice where the uh, heater core was sitting because you got all this old antifreeze or whatever that maybe perhaps leaked. So I just got, you know, a couple shop rags and some towels and I went in and just kind of wiped it out. Got it all clean to the best of my ability. And then now, all that's left to do, well besides everything, is to um, just put it back together the exact same way that we took it apart. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the heater core out of the box, inspect it, make sure it all looks good, and um, then we'll start the installation. So here we got the new heater core. Just after the initial inspection, it looks to be identical to the one that was in here initially. And we got the fittings in. So now the trick here is to kind of get this all up in the place and get these hoses to align with those holes in the firewall. It's probably going to be the hardest part about this whole process. For to a, especially for a beginner and even myself. Um, so we're going to just kind of, sometimes you got to finesse it in the right way. I think this base goes in first. And we'll just kind of, there it goes. And we'll stand it up. And then now, get, make sure all your wiring and anything else that may have fallen down in the process is out of the way. And now we're going to try to find these holes in the firewall. And we're going to get those lined up first. They need some minor tweaking on the, with the pipes and get them all to slide. There we go. Now we're back in through the firewall. Now we're just going to simply lift this into place. Now through this whole process, you got to make sure that your foam is actually staying put and not falling off because it's very easy for that to all kind of fall off as you're doing this. So you get this all set up in the position. And then we'll go ahead and start putting that stuff back on, starting with the cover. All right, so now we're gonna take our cover. Again, make sure to clean up any residue left over from the antifreeze. And you wanna take this section with these tabs sticking out, make sure that is facing up. Now the thing you gotta watch for is this corner right here. This is probably gonna be the trickiest thing. There's a little slit. I'm not sure how well this will show up on the video, but a little space that's right here. And now what you have to do is actually take it up, there's a piece of plastic in here, and you kind of got to take it up over that piece of plastic and then drop it down. So that way this boss, this feature, is on the back side of this plastic right here. So make sure to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this section up first, take it to the inside, and drop it down. Okay, we're going to work on that corner that I was just talking to you about first. We got to make sure to drop that in right in the right way so we kind of take it up over that lip and then drop it down now there's going to be a alignment pin over here on this side 
and we're gonna line that up, push that in. That kind of holds everything in place at the right height. Again, you got your foam and everything right here. And then, at that point, the rest of your screws should all line up, and it's looking really good. So now what we're gonna do, then take our driver again, and we got seven screws. And uh, what I would suggest is you start down at the bottom first, just because they're easy to get at, and it'll kind of hold everything together. At least get one started on the bottom, but I'm just gonna do both while I'm down here. And just gonna work my way around. Now another thing you may want to do on this cover, this still had um, RTV and sealant that was still a little tacky on it. So I decided just to leave that alone, but you can add your own sealant if you're concerned about that. If you're concerned that, you know, it's not there, or there's not enough adequate sealing. I'm not too concerned with this, with the way it looked. So again, just we got seven screws, so we just got to work our way around. And as a reminder, this is an 8 millimeter drive, I believe. Yep, 8 millimeters. Okay. Uh, tricky one is up here in the top. It's a little harder to get in, so hopefully you guys can kind of see where I'm working at up here. Once you get it in person in front of you, it'll be really obvious. And um, again, just working my way around to each your own. But that's just what I find works well. So that way as I work my way around I can see where there maybe is a, an issue or something not lining up as well as it should. But everything is looking very good. Yeah, you definitely want good sealing because if this box leaks, then you're going to have uh, air leaking into your uh, compartment here, and that's not good. You want to be as efficient as you do, as you are. Want to be uh, when you're, you know, blowing air around here. Oh, I got my tongue a little tied there. All right. So now that this cover is on, what's next, guys? Well, what we'd removed before taking this cover off was this vacuum actuator. So we're going to grab that from the parts and get that put on. All right, so I got the vacuum plunger here, and again, remember this hook? That's really the key. You got to get this lined up first. There's this little flapper piece. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's that little dampener that kind of, I believe it sends the air either up or down, and um, you want to get that hook lined up first. So first you're going to take it kind of behind. You're going to put it through the hole. And if you guys were able to see that, it kind of hooked it. And then... We're going to put that up in the place. Now, before I get too carried away with that, we got the vacuum line, remember? I almost forgot to unplug that the last time, so you want to get that plugged in first. It'll be a lot easier if you get that plugged in first, because that way you won't forget. And then you kind of line it all up, and we're just going to start by getting the screws kind of hand tight here. Yeah, I tweaked the camera because I don't know how well that's showing up. That looks much better. All right, there you go, guys. Getting you a better op, better view here. So we're getting the first screw started here. And we're going to go over to this side. Apologize how hard that is because it is kind of tight. Hard to show on the camera. So we're going to take my, uh, again, mini socket. Make sure it's tightening, 8 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and snug this side up first. It doesn't really matter which side you pick, but just uh, pick one. And uh, don't get it super tight, just kind of get it most of the way there. And then I'd suggest you go to the other side. And actually, I'm going to undo these vacuum lines because I remember that they're there. And I'm going to get them out of my way because it'll be just a little bit easier. But if you're uh, one of those guys that tends to be a little more forgetful, then I would suggest you keep plug those in before you get too carried away. And then that way you won't forget what you need to do. Now this is really tight up in here. So we're going to see if we can get the socket in from the back side. Maybe give us a little bit more room to work. So I'm already forgetting which way I did it to take it apart. So we got the socket wrench actually behind the actuator here. This plunger. I'm not good rid of my verbiage, so I apologize if I'm not being 
perfectly correct for all you gearhead guys, but this is how I keep it straight in my head. So we've got that one, that side all snugged up. Go back over to this side, tighten it the rest of the way. Okay, it's all snugged. Now we're going to go and plug in the vacuum lines. Gonna wiggle them back and forth till they're on. Looks good. All right. So now we're gonna grab the actuator here. So here we got the actuating motor, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put that back up in the place. Now I haven't adjusted it or anything. I left all the settings the way they were. And um, I'm going to kind of tuck the wiring harness up and out of the way here, just to make life a little bit easier. And we're just going to sit this up in the place. I got this piece that has to drop down in to the actual uh, flap there. And um, there's, you can kind of feel it with your finger if you put it up in there. So you got to make sure to drop that up in the place, as well as then get these other pieces to align. So let's start with one thing at a time. We're going to slowly work it up in there. To get that adjuster piece down in there. Hopefully you guys were able to see how I did that. And now we're just going to spin this around. There we go. And that's locking it in with those extra tab screws that I showed you earlier. And then all that leaves is the two screws to put that back together. Again, an 8 millimeter drive. So we're going to get this started in the front. I'm going to get this one in and tight because it's kind of not wanting to hold itself together as well as I would like it to. Put that all snug. Now this is the hard one. We got one more screw here. And I have to reach into the back. If you remember how I was struggling with this before, this is a even more exciting when you're putting it back together because then you got to try to line it all up as well as actually tighten it. So unfortunately there's not much to show in this part because we're kind of doing it all by feel by the fact because it's all just so tight. All right. All right, so I got that all tightened up. You're just going to have to trust me on that one. We're going to find this wiring harness for this guy. Here's the plug. We're just going to plug him back in. It looks like the tab faces down. You just want to go in to give it a nice pop. There you go, you hear it click. It means it's connected. And then, all that's left here, just a couple little things. We're going to get these vacuum lines kind of tucked up out of the way. Again, pop them into this little snapping hole here. Just be very gentle so you don't break the lines. Got a hook here. I routed that slightly wrong. Let's re rework that. Okay. I've got this little plastic dude, which unfortunately you can't see now because I changed the camera angle. So let's lower it down here. Sorry for all the wiggling. I've got this little plastic dude that needs to just pop into this hole. Give it a good push till it's taut. And then we just got our connector here for the vacuum line. So we're just going to give that up. It's keyed, so you can't mess it up. There's a slot here and an extra little tab here. So that way you can't mess it up. You want to just push those in tight. Out of the way. Now this pierced to have been already kind of worked on prior to me, so I'm just going to reroute those lines a little bit better so that way they're not hanging down. There's a little clip here, you should just kind of loop it in there. Um, if you find a better routing, then go ahead and use it, but um, for this particular truck, it appears that this is the best way to do it. Everything looks good, nothing's loose on that side. All right, a bunch of motorcycles going by. How about that? All right. So now all that's left to do is to put the glove box back in. So you're going to kind of line up the base to about where it's supposed to go. And as you remember, there's these tabs at the top. You just push on each side, kind of get the top in first. That'll help hold itself in the place. And then we just got to line up the bottom. Now there's going to be little bolts that all need to line up to the bottom. I'll get my head down in the action here. You'll be able to see it. Right. Kind of work it back and forth. There's little alignment pins on the bottom side. 
We'll just latch that, kind of help hold it up into position. And then what we got to do is we just have these three screws. So as always, I always recommend you start your screws first by hand. So we're just going to get them all started. change out the driver here back to the 930 seconds because uh, again that's what it appeared to be for me and I don't have any smaller metric so it actually probably is metric but unfortunately I don't have that so it's gonna start in the middle because that's gonna help kind of locate it all and hold it in place get that tight and just one on each side Tighten that back up Got it. There we go. Good and tight. Just make sure your glove box still works. Open, stops, latches. Good to go. All right. So now we got to go back under the hood and uh, reconnect the lines. Hey guys. Well, the weather's turning on me. It's starting to spit rain, but we're going to go ahead and get this done anyway. But as you can see, we got the uh, the new pipe sticking through back in there, and it's already around. The rubber boots are already good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the hoses. I just had them kind of tucked up and out of the way. And we're just going to hook it all back up and then we'll top off the radiator and we'll be good to go. So as I said, there's a lot of great um, sources out on the internet as far as how to do these quick disconnects. Unfortunately, with it being so tight in this operation, I won't be able to show you anything that's helpful because you'll just see my hands moving and hear a little snap. And uh, so basically check out those videos they do uh, they show it outside of the vehicle um, and it's a lot more informative and more helpful so check that out instead of um, watching my hands kind of just wiggle around and hear a pop so we're just going to connect those lines fill up the antifreeze and then we'll be good to go so there you go guys that is how you change the heater core in your ford super duty pickup years 99 to 2007. This is uh, Alex from All For Him Racing signing off, and good luck on your project, guys.